guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another quick video. So today we're back here at this car lot. It's blistering hot out today. It's about 100 degrees outside. And we are here to take a look at the AC on this 2009 Honda Odyssey. Now the shop already replaced the AC compressor. Let me explain to you why they did. So whenever you would turn the vehicle on and turn the AC on, it would actually blow the refrigerant out past the relief valve on the back of the AC compressor. So initially they did a diagnosis. I'm not really sure how they came to the conclusion that the AC compressor was a problem, but even after replacing the AC compressor, they found that it still did the same thing. So they called us out to come take a look at it. As you guys can see, I already have my AC manifold gauges connected. Let me take you in for a closer look. Okay, so taking a quick look at the AC manifold gauges, our low side and our high side. Right now, the engine is not running. And if you take a look at our pressures, you can see that we are equalized. So we have about 105 over here and 105 over here. So we know that the system is sufficiently charged with Freon or excuse me, refrigerant. So let me go ahead and start this thing up and show you what it's doing. So I'm just gonna take the keys, stick it into the ignition and start this thing up. We'll make sure that the AC is on. It is on. Let's go ahead and move under the hood. Take a look at the manifold gauges. All right, so taking a look at the manifold gauges, you guys can see, oh, there goes our refrigerant <laughs> blowing out of that pressure relief valve. Sorry, that kind of spooked me a little bit. That's what I was talking about there. The AC compressor is blowing past the relief valve. Take a look at these pressures. Look at the high side here. We're somewhere around 25 on the high side. And on the low side over here, we're kind of hanging somewhere around 20, 30. But if you guys notice, look how fast this AC compressor is cycling on and off. Now, one thing I will note is that the pressure relief valve on the back of the AC compressor, it actually takes a lot of pressure to blow that valve open. I mean, I think it takes somewhere at least around 500 PSI to actually open up that valve. And if you take a look at our high side, you'll see that we're only around 25 PSI. Well, the reason for that is because the location of our ports, where our ports are located or where the manufacturer put them is where we're reading the pressure from. So if you guys could imagine if we had some type of blockage on the line right here before the port, we wouldn't be reading the pressure behind that blockage. And likewise, if we had a blockage in front of this port, we would be reading the high pressure that's coming from the AC compressor. So it's safe to assume that we have a blockage somewhere in the system before this high side port. Now, if we follow this line down, it goes directly to the AC condenser down there at the bottom. It's actually easier to see it through the grill here. If you take a look, that is where our line connects down at the bottom and it goes through the condenser coil and then it comes out here at the top. You see this line right here, the runs through here, that goes directly down to the AC compressor. So somewhere between the AC compressor down here and this high side port, we have a blockage in the system. And again, our only components here are the high side discharge line that goes from the AC compressor to the condenser up here at the top. We have the condenser itself, and then we have the discharge line that comes from the condenser that goes over here where our high side port is, which eventually goes off to the expansion valve. Now we can assume that we don't have a problem anywhere over there with the expansion valve, because over here we're reading low pressure. That means our blockage is somewhere on this side. Now, the quickest way for us to determine where the blockage is, is to just use something like this. This is a temperature gun that has a little laser pointer and we can point at certain spots in the AC system to try to determine where we have a significant difference in temperature. So what I'm gonna do is start by getting a measurement up here at the top where this line connects to the AC condenser. Take a look at our temperature here. You can see we're somewhere around 240 degrees. Whoa, Ugh. that thing just blew out again. And then if we get a temperature reading down here, I'm just gonna stick this through the grill, and try to get a temperature reading down here. This is our line coming out of the AC condenser. We take a look at our temperature difference over here. We've only got about 70 degrees now, the funny thing is, it looks to me like this line is actually getting cold. Take a look at that. There's actually condensation coming off of that line. Can you guys see that drip right up there at the top? It looks like it's getting ready to drip some water. This line has got condensation on it. There is no reason we should have condensation on this line because this line should never get cold like that. 
take a look up here where the line extends up to the high side port this line is actually cold this line should never be cold the cold line should be this bigger low side line right here but if you touch it it's actually just warm because of the heat in the engine bay so we know that's why our ac is not cooling so with that quick check using a temperature gun like this we were quickly able to determine that more than likely our problem or our blockage in the system is located in the ac condenser now after doing a quick visual inspection of this ac condenser i didn't notice anything up here at the top but when i look down at the bottom through this opening here you can actually see where our frame is bent down here at the bottom it almost looks like somebody went up on a curb take a look at it through the bottom here if you look at the ac condenser hopefully that's noticeable enough but it looks like the condenser itself got bent or crushed so that certainly looks like that's where our problem is so there you have it guys i'm going to tell them to replace the ac condenser I'm also going to recommend to them while they're at it, go ahead and flush the lines. Now, I may not actually be here during the repair, so if I post this video, this was definitely a fix. Okay guys, so fast forward. It's been two days now since we last looked at the vehicle. I actually got a phone call from the shop owner, told me that everything was good after they replaced the AC condenser. So I wanted to give you guys an update on that. And I also wanted to kind of go over why we had the issue where the line was getting cold on the discharge side. If you guys remember, I saw that there was condensation on there. And when we took a measurement with the temperature gun, we found that it was getting down to like 60 degrees on that line coming from the condenser going up toward the expansion valve. Well, the reason the line was getting cold like that was because our blockage was happening inside of the AC condenser. If you guys understand how an AC system works, Essentially, it starts with the AC compressor, which is basically a pump. It sucks and it discharges. The suction side is what we call the low side, and the discharge side is what we call the high pressure side. When the AC compressor compresses the refrigerant and shoots it out of the discharge side, the refrigerant comes out as a liquid. It comes into the compressor on the suction side as a gas. The compressor compresses it and shoots it out of the discharge side as a liquid. Now, when this liquid gets discharged from the AC compressor, it's actually very hot. Now, the way we turn this hot liquid refrigerant into a cold gas is through something called an expansion valve or an orifice tube. And essentially, the expansion valve or the orifice tube works much in the same way as an aerosol spray can. Inside of the can, we have a compressed liquid. So if you shake this can, you can feel that it's full of liquid. But when you shoot it out of this tiny little orifice, this tiny little hole on the nozzle, it comes out as a spray and that spray is atomized and it's cold. The orifice tube in your AC system works exactly the same way. It's essentially forcing the hot liquid refrigerant to pass through a tiny little orifice and from there the refrigerant turns into a gas and it becomes freezing cold. This is how refrigerant is used to cool down your vehicle. This is also why whenever you touch the low side or the suction line on your AC system while it's running, it's cold to the touch. And oftentimes you'll see condensation coming off of it. But when you touch the discharge line, which I don't recommend you do, it's usually very hot. So when I saw that our discharge line was actually cold to the touch, I knew that there was definitely something wrong. What this told me was that the blockage was inside of the condenser and the blockage was acting much like an orifice tube or an expansion valve. So hopefully you guys can utilize this technique in your diagnosis. Again, using a temperature gun to try to find a blockage in an AC system is a very useful tool to have. Anyways, like I always say, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you find it informational, educational. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.